Welcome to Care Garage. We're going to upgrade some headlights. Uh, these things look terrible. I told y'all I would show you the proper way to really restore these so that you shouldn't ever have to work about them again. And today's the day. These belong to my friend Christina. Stand by. I went over to her house and uh, you saw I pulled them off of the car these mustang headlights are so easy to put on and take off off of the older ones um but if you have a mustang like it you know all right i'm gonna pull these lights out of here i don't really want to ruin them if they'll come out this wants to be difficult as it does come on you here it was stuck with a little gluey stuff on it that sucker's burn out. <laughs> uh, I'll put it up here with the other ones. <laughs> and these are just in there. I'll put that up here with them. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do with this thing is obviously clean it. All right, we're going to start this just like we did the last one when I did the front painted the front on there is the same deal because we're gonna put uh, clear coat on here. This has got to be clean before you start to sand it. So I got my Dawn and we're just gonna spray this down and let it soak. I'm gonna let that soak a minute. And then I got some soapy water to clean it with. Look how nasty it's getting already. And uh, it's Dawn in the water as well. And I'll use the soapy Dawn water to sand with as well. That should be good enough. It's soaked for a minute, man. We got the soapy water and the washcloth. All that'll take all this crap off of here. I'm gonna drop it. It's actually heavy. It's very odd shaped. <laughs> all right. It's all rinsed and ready to go. Just gonna try to blow some of the water out of the inside. There's still a lot of water in it. All over the top of the toolbox. I'm gonna attempt to not have to take these apart. That'll be a video for another time. But there is a way to take these lens off of here. Uh, you just gotta heat it in the oven and loosen up this all this butyl glue that's in here and then you can separate them mm -hmm. maybe all right so i got 600 grit here this is actually a used 600 grit so it's not actually 600 grit and basically now i just got to sand this lens down okay and make sure your paper stays good and wet now i got a lot of soap in this Generally, when you're wet sand, you don't need that much soap, but I don't know how many contaminants and junks are on here. I did wash it, but if I use, you know, the extra, then I'll be good. Got a little stuff here where there's a little rubber, little piece of rubber that goes around the top of these. It's just, it has really no purpose other than looks. Get that off of there. So we can sand into that. Good. And just gonna go at it. All right, I decided to take this thing apart after all because I was gonna do some custom lights in it, stuff like that. It didn't work out, but um, because I couldn't fit the lights in the way I wanted to. But I will show you here now how to take it apart and how to put it together. All right, I heated this in the oven. 220 degrees for 10 minutes so it's kind of hot we should be able to get it to come apart here you gotta be careful with using these but you shouldn't really use these we'll see how it goes at this point it's just a matter of pulling in grabbing and pulling brute force and I got a screwdriver here but be careful with the screwdriver because you could crack it you could gouge something you don't want to do that 
and basically you just got to work you got to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull that stuff really sticks together even when it's heated up eventually it'll come apart oh wait a minute now we're getting somewhere yeah we're getting somewhere one quick note don't screw up like i did if you take them apart make sure you mask the back side of it before you put the clear coat on otherwise you're going to get overspray all over the back side of it, and you can have to polish the back side like i did so make sure you mask the back side before you go uh spraying it that hold on some kind of screw yep good old fort so we got a screw right there we know we got to pull it's all covered up with butyl garbage there yeah, I bet it'll come off. Yep, yeah, it'll come off. Once you get to there, it should be terrible hard to get the rest of it apart. Although, it's probably drying on me. Still don't know about that piece. I think I really think that's holding it. Yep, it was holding it. There we go. Now, let's see. Fingers in there. You know, watch all this stuff because you don't want it all in there. Another screw? I don't know. There it is. There we go. Now it's apart. Thank goodness. This is that butyl stuff I was talking about. I got new to put in here to seal this up. Now I get in here and make sure that the lens is actually clean. There's no spots on it. We don't. Once you close it up, then you're done. <laughs> all right. So we had all that cleaning and all that sanding. These are ready to go, with one exception. I don't know where my prep spray is. Wait a minute. It might be some here. Stuff I prefer to use. Warning. Again, this stuff will melt plastic, and this is plastic. So, you don't spray it on there, spray it on your rag, that quickly. There's already a bug in it, like that. You don't need to do much. drying out I can come again here and it'd be nice if I had some uh, hmm. a tack cloth but I don't tack cloth is a good idea uh, you wind up with stuff like that I'm gonna use my wick wax and grease remover Stuff isn't quite as hard and I've left some things here and I want it gone. There. Alright, between those two, this is a whole lot less harsh. It won't actually melt your plastic. And that got all the little ningleberries from my cloth off. 
and we'll let that dry up. When you're a paint or clear coat, anything plastic, adhesion promoter. You got to make sure you got adhesion promoter on it. Because that'll make the paint or clear coat or whatever stick to the plastic. Otherwise, it might not stick. And it's just, this can isn't spraying real well. Well, I can get a couple coats on it. It's a really light one. like that and I'm gonna let that set for about five minutes and I'm gonna put another coat I didn't say to mix the stick but I'm gonna use it as one <laughs> all right your cup you gotta mix this stuff in different ways this mix is four to one so you got all these numbers on the cup here and I hope you can see this but I'm gonna go to all right four to one to one so I only need four to one so it, let's say if I need two, which I don't need that much, I'm going to bring it up to the one um, with the clear coat, and that's the four part. And then the one, I'm going to bring it up to the one here, and that'll be the one. That'll be one part. That's how you mix it. And it's got all kinds of different ones, just six to one to one, eight to one, and blah, 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 blah. So let's get my four to one here. Four to one right there. And I'm just gonna give us a little shake. If I'm not supposed to do that, tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a professional painter. I've told you that. All right, let's get that off of there. It's really hard to pour this stuff. Four to one. All right, so we're gonna go here. Stop. One everywhere. Oh man, I can't see my... All right. I don't know, there must be a way to pour this where it doesn't go everywhere. It's going everywhere anyway. Then, all right, I got that to that one line. Whew, what a mess. a little easier this is the uh, activator hardener hardener it's a medium hardener I'm not sure what that means I kind of do but not enough to explain it <laughs> and I'm gonna bring this up to on that second line to the next one and now that's mixed four to one This aside. All right, now. And I made a mess. Mix this up really good. This is my first coat. Now I'm gonna do something a little interesting. We're gonna turn that into a tint. I'm just gonna spray some on bottom of here is probably more than what I should have but mix that in there and oh no that's just about right let's see I could go slightly darker you gotta be careful if you don't want to go too dark so it's just black paint and I don't want to put too much in and that's gonna be it right there we're gonna stop right there that's going to give us a nice tint. Hopefully it won't be too much of a tint. I don't think it will. Just like that there. Wipe that off. All right, there's my paint gun. Still trying to get the right um, things for the top of this. What this will do. So I'm going with uh, a filter. And we take this and we pour it right on in there like that. There. All right. 
Set that cup aside. Okay. Put the cap on it. Now. Last time you see me play with this thing, nothing was working right. Now, we got it working right now. Uh, some, some dummy, I don't know who it was, put this one upside down. <laughs> yeah, that was me. That's why it wouldn't work. So now I'm just gonna bring this a little bit and not gonna spray out stuff right now. Just wanna see my pressure. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Pop this out. It suggests you spray this at about 15. The pros say 20. I'm going about 18, just splitting the difference. All right, so now my fan. Let's see, I think that's, no, that's all the way out. I'll bring this in like this. Okay. And a little bigger. A little bigger. All right, I think I like that. All right. Now, we're going to put a light coat on because we don't want to run it. Just like that, that's my glue coat. Don't worry, I'm outside and the breeze is blowing. It's not the most ideal weather for painting outside. It's what I got, I'm in the driveway. Y'all know that. There. All right, we're going to let that set about 10 minutes. And we'll put another coat of this on because that didn't darken it that much, but I want to be careful. So we'll put another coat of this on. All right, pop that and we'll leave this set. Let that dry for about 10. All right, all right. You're right. I should be wearing a mask, a respirator, especially spraying this stuff. So always wear one of these things when you spray this stuff so i'm gonna bring this pressure up to 20. i think it's better yeah, 20. Yeah. now another thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring the, the volume up okay i'm at one and a half i'll bring it out oh that's better yeah all right now You get the dump thing on. There we go. now I am not left handed you can do it this way and and let's not get crazy That looks pretty good. The tint is just a little bit. It's not heavy, which is fine. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna put one more coat of that tinted one on. And then we'll mix up some regular clear. I want two coats of clear, regular clear, on top of this. Then we'll sand them and polish them. If we need to, we might not need to sand and polish, but we'll see how it turns out. All right, now just clear. Give a little more flow. Hold on. Bear with me. I don't have enough hands here.
Okay, I'm looking to give it one more coat of clear. Now, this clear, this doesn't have any tint in it. We're done tinting. Now we're just putting clear on so that we can sand them down and polish them out, but since we've got bugs in them and all kinds of stuff, which happens outside, but you can sand that, polish it, it'll be fine. You never see it. So I'm in the kitchen because it's raining outside. Um, before, all right, we got to seal these up is what we got to do now. So before you go sealing these up, you get this stuff online here. This is uh, a butyl something or other. And this is the same stuff they seal up windshields with. So you're just going to take this stuff here. And we're going to put it in right here. Right in this where the uh, glass is going to go. Well, plastic, but you know. And there's a little groove. There's a little groove right here and you want it all in there because that's where it's going to seal up so we want to fill that whole thing in so i don't know if you notice what i'm doing here i'm actually stretching it because it doesn't have to be this thick in this little groove just i just want to fill the groove in and so i stretch it so that when you stretch it it makes it a little bit smaller bead and then you just push it right in there just like that and uh, I'm gonna have to come back and get this out so now I've made it almost all the way around and just make sure it's all down that groove there just like that and I'm just gonna pinch it off right there it's hard stuff to pinch off yeah. and it's probably way more than I need right there but it'd be okay I'll clear it later and it's going to go all in there like that. Now we got that done. We're going to push this lens back into there. Make sure there's no dog hairs around this house. Definitely dog hairs. Or anything inside of there before you push it together. Because once you push it together, you're done. Alright. And just carefully get this back into that groove. Check the bottom, make sure we're going in the way we should be. Looking good. I'm going to push this in on here. <clears throat> like that. Put it over. <clears throat> and you can use a pair of pliers, be careful with them. Pull it together a little bit. Just like that 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 don't want to use it on there because that will scratch that all right in the oven 220 10 minutes so I got a couple blocks of wood in the oven here as well to set the plastic on because you don't want to set it on the metal it might melt it 10 minutes all right i love and if you have gloves it's probably a good thing i don't have gloves now we want to push this thing together as much as we can it's hot it's 220 degrees i mean that's not really gonna burn you hot hot but it's hot but see how that pushes together much easier now that you got all that glue hot now tricky part on these mustang ones is down here to make sure that this winds up in its proper seating place all right so <clears throat> try to do this without getting glue all over this i want my rags See how the bottom looks. Now what I found I can do is rest this on the counter like this. Give it a good push. Don't crack it, but there. Now looking pretty good. Come over here.
Dang it. Be careful. We got like that. And we'll push this in like that as I go down there. That. There. 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 Alright, pretty good on this side, I'm just going to really do anything there. Now we're going to come on the bottom, bottom you kind of got to work with because there's no place to squeeze it. <clears throat> I'm going to get those tabs to go in, I mean this tab here is really messed up. Yeah, it is, Let's see if I can't get it to go down a little bit you know it's all right it'd be fine and you just got to keep working with it until you get it all in as far as you can all right i got led bulbs for them all right now here's the thing about led bulbs i don't care which ones you get some of them have two sides. If they have two sides, then one side needs to be pointed this way and one side needs to be pointed this way. That's the proper way to clock them to shine into the reflectors. If they have three sides like these do, these are high lows, um, you'll notice this one is right about here, and this one is right about here, and this one down here. That's your high beam. It actually goes down. So that's how you put that in like that so you got to clock it like that now these collars come off here so you can put them in here and then do all your clocking a little tricky all right it's raining i'm gonna give us i'm gonna wind up having being the rain but whatever um it's raining i'm gonna wind up having to be in the rain but there's our headlights and there's the other one and they're looking good got them on the car got the LEDs in there, and we're good to go. Till next time, see ya. Ah! Ah!